Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I want to help out any returning or new collector that's a little bit overwhelmed and it's kind of like all over the place when it comes to collecting Pokemon cards. And I just want to give you my quick guide on how I go about collecting Pokemon cards and why I think is the most efficient way. So hopefully this video helps you out and let's get started. So here we are looking at the Scarlet Violet era. We get four main sets a year right here. Scarlet Violet Base, Padilla, Obsidian Flames, Scarlet 151 is a specialty set. You got Paradox Rift, that's the main set. So it says right here, main series, main series, special expansion. The number of cards in each set, this is the main set, and then these are the secret rares that everybody wants, and then this is the release date. As you can see, sometimes it's a couple months, sometimes it's right after the other one. Set even comes out, we get all our news from Poke Beach. Great resource to use. He'll let you know the sets that are coming out in this following year. You'll give Japanese information because they Get their cards before we do. He'll leak the cards that are in a particular set, set names coming out, when they're coming out, so you can kind of plan. Like if you love evolutions, you might save your money just to open Parasomatic Evolutions, evolutions. So, and if you really like this chase card, maybe you're gonna wait out and buy this particular set so you can pull this chase. So, a great resource to use when you want to know what's coming up, so you can plan accordingly. And also, Justin Basil, great visual set list, so you can see what cards are in a set. Now, these cards get leaked individually over the few days leading up to when the set is released, so they will update the website as soon as the leaks come out. So that way you know if a set is worth chasing. Uh, if you know there's a if it's a real lich like me, it's my favorite Pokemon, I might actually buy a booster box so I can just get a chance to pull this card and feel the thrill. Right? You can always buy singles, but you want to buy sets. I mean, if you want to buy a booster box, you want to know what chase cards are in there, if it's worth your money, if it's worth your time. Because otherwise, just if it's just one card in that set that you want, just buy the single, right? But if there's a few, it might be worth opening. Like if you can pull three cards that you like or six cards that you like, it would, it would be worth opening. So use this visual set list from Poke Beach and Justin Bezos to determine how hard you want to go into a particular set when it comes to buying product to win. So where do you go to buy your Pokemon sealed product? First place you can look is going to be the Pokemon Center website. This is the official website for the Pokemon company. All the products are legit and this is their MSRP price. So do not be paying more than these prices for any product out there in the wild that you see at major retailers or cart shops. As a ETB, Pokemon Center's exclusive ETB is actually $10 more than the MSRP one. So a regular ETB is only $49.99. A booster box should go for $161 or less, $27 or less, and no more than $450 per pack. Now TCG Player is my go-to when I will need to know what is fair value for a product outside of the retail price. So secondary market, free market out there will determine what the market price is, right? Pre-order prices right here. $121 for a booster box, $42 for the ETB, and $24 for the booster bundle. Those are my main items that I look at. But my go-to place to buy Pokemon cards is online card shop. For me in Canada, it's the best bang for the buck. So you got this booster box already cheaper than what uh, TCG player is saying. Pre-sales go for $116, ETB is going for $38, and then $22 for the booster bundle. So these are pre-sale price. They could be less or more than what they will be in the long run, but you know, it's fair price, right? Because it's cheaper than what the market price is that is listed on TCG Player. And that's how I determine if it's a good deal or not. Now you could go to your local car shop, pick up items there. Unfortunately for me, I feel like my card shops around here are a little pricier than what is online. I um, mean, I know they gotta pay rent and all that stuff, but for me, I, I don't rip a lot of packs and I just wanna get the most bang for my buck, so I will stick to buying them online. Unless you really want the product right away, then sure, you can go to your local card shop, then you can play the uh, TCG as well. There's pre-release events that you can attend. Uh, major retailers up here in Canada are really overpriced. Your Walmarts, Tars R Us, uh, London Drugs, all those places that we can get Pokemon cards up here. It's above MSRP, it's above Pokemon Center price. So so I don't even bother buying products from there. Costco is the only major retailer up here that I would buy products from because they got the best bang for a buck. You can get packs for like $2 USD. It's like $4 USD, so uh, $4 Canadian. So a re regular pack up here is like $8 and Costco has it for like four something. So it's like 50% off when it comes to ripping packs. So Costco is the only one that I would buy from major retailers when it comes to ripping packs. So what products should you be buying? In my eyes, it comes down to price per pack. Best price per pack is the product you should be buying depending on how many packs you want to rip, right? If you want to rip a lot of packs, two booster boxes, worth the packs, just get the booster box. Don't be buying five ETBs to get there because it's just more convenient for you. Focus on getting the most bang for your buck because if you want to pull your chase card, it comes to comes down to how many packs you can rip. The more packs you can rip, the better chance odds of pulling that chase card. So again, if you want to rip a lot of packs, booster box is king. If you want to rip just a couple of packs, booster bundle because for the price of two booster bundles at $44, it's almost the same price as one ETB. You end up with 12 booster packs here if you buy two of them and you still get nine for just $4 more. So uh, ETBs, I haven't bought them since Crown Zenith. So specialty sets, you might have to buy them because there's no booster box option. But even then, booster bundles are the better option nowadays just because for the price of two, it's equal to one ETB for more packs. That's how I see it. So that's my go-to when it comes to picking up seal product. Now it's time to focus on singles. Now you rip all your packs, you probably pull a good chase card and you might know the value of it. TCG player is the go-to. 
we're here to look at the market price value of our cards to see what we should list it for how much we should offer so how much we should offer someone if we if they have it listed and you want to negotiate the price lower you want to get around this price right this is usually going to be where everyone's going to be willing to sell their cards so we can use tcg player just to get the market price when it comes to buying and selling cards you want to sell it as soon as possible because that's when there's the most demand and the most limited amount of supply as more packs are ripped more supplies put out there a card the card value just keeps on dropping and dropping and dropping over time and now it's down 53 percent from the high so if you wait to sell your card you're losing 50 percent of your value of that card but if you're looking to buy the card you want to wait it out you want to be patient until there's more supply out there than demand my rule of thumb is i like to look for it yeah when a chart like this is flat around a range that's when i get the okay that it's okay to pick up this card around the 50 dollars 60 dollars range sure you can wait and it'll drop to 44 dollars but by that time it's already been a year you're already on to the fifth set this is kind of in the back of the brain right you're, you're not back of the head you're not thinking of buying roaring moon you could if you're newly back into the hobby at a different time but if you're on top of your sets you probably already moved on to the newest set money's going to elsewhere so yeah i like to wait to see a flat line in value which could happen like three months a month or six months after it's recently released but you'll be in that range for a bit so it's a good time to pick up then or ideally you look for a 30 to 50 percent drop which is the case here a tip that could help you save money is actually collecting cards in other languages and japanese is actually very affordable when it comes to their booster boxes and their singles As you can see a booster box over there goes about 55 dollars even less sometimes but this is a brand new set uh, super electric breaker their version of our surging spark and they get their single they get their sets before we do so you kind of get an idea of what their singles go for uh, and they tend to be less than our english counterpart on some occasions most occasions i honestly think except for waifu cards but you do get to see the cards first in japanese just because they came out there first and i will leave a link if you want to pick up japanese cards down below in my ebay link but i will consider japanese cards as the price tend to be less than english price and in the long run it's all about the best bang for the buck and english has just gotten a little out of control with their prices so if you're just collecting for the artwork consider japanese cards cards as it is a great alternative to collecting pokemon cards on a budget and also easier for new beginners i think just because the sets are smaller so hopefully this video helped out any collectors getting back into it um, quick guideline so thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys next time